about electric cars, people are always trying to find the one that gives you the most range. There's this thing called range anxiety because electric cars, you know, lose a lot of power. Everything that powers the vehicle comes from that battery. <clears throat> Excuse me. And there are a lot of debates on uh, at the uh, Tesla web pages, usually as to whether you buy the mid range, the long range Model 3, the S100, D, the S75, and so on and so forth. So, what I decided to do was a little bit of a data driven comparison, but first I want to say that if you are in the average commuter, uh, range of the United States, which is about 30 to 40 miles a day, any Tesla will do perfectly fine, even in cold conditions, where you might lose actually, where you might lose actually, 50% uh, of of uh, of the miles you drive might be lost due to cold weather and heating and all that stuff. You still have plenty of um, of range if you drive 40, even 50 miles uh, a day and you lose another 50 miles due to cold weather or inclement weather of any kind, right? You're still spending 100 miles a day on a car that is rated for 200 plus miles. So let's, let's be clear. I don't think it matters what car, what model of Tesla you drive if you're an average commuter. There are commuters that have a much longer commuter from very cold places or uh, or different circumstances, but for the vast majority of people, it doesn't matter which car you drive if that is your commuter car. It doesn't matter which Tesla you drive if that's your commuter Tesla. Now, road trips, on the other hand, which a lot of uh, Tesla owners talk about and, and have done it, and there's plenty of videos on YouTube of people and experiences in the road trips, road trips are a slightly different thing. So here's what I set out to do. <clears throat> I set out to compare the Tesla with the shortest range, the Tesla with the longest range, and the and Model 3 long range, and then a Tesla with about 260 miles of range, which would be equivalent, I would think, to the Model 3 mid-range, but the Model 3 mid-range is not in the tool that I use. So what did I do? I designed about four different road trips and compare these different Tesla models in terms of time it would take to get there. I also compare the same road trips uh, done with an ICE car using Google Maps. And the first road trip is a smaller 400-ish mile road trip from Chicago to Minneapolis. And the first model that I will uh, that I compare was the Model X 75 kilowatt battery, right? That gives about 237 uh, miles, right, of range. So when you do that, you get the route. Then I look at all the stations you have to charge. But here at the end, you see the duration is eight hours, 18 minutes, which is in like converting it all to decimal and not hours is about 8.3 hours. Um, <clears throat> So, and, and it takes 410 miles. Then we do the same for something equivalent to the Model 3, uh, to the Model 3 uh, mid-range, which is the, the Model S75D, which gives you 260 miles of range almost. And you see that the time is a little bit better. It's just flat eight hours and there's a little bit less miles because you probably have to go out of your way a little bit less. Then I did the same thing with the Model 3 long range, which gives you 310 miles of range per charge. And this gives us seven hours, 15 minutes, right? So seven, 7.3 hours, 7.25 hours, and the same 407 miles. And then the longest range car, which is the Model S100D, and that is, if you can see in the map, you only charge once there, right? So it does the trip in seven hours, 30 minutes. And then I went to Google Maps and I did, you know, from Chicago, Illinois to St. Paul, Minnesota. And six hours and three minutes, and it's the same 407 miles. 
So I did this for a number of trips. The next trip that I chose was uh, from Chicago with the model, uh, I'm going to start with the smallest one, right? From Chicago to Raleigh. I want you to pay attention at the number of um, at the number of stations in or the number of stops to charge, right? So I'm going to go to Raleigh, North Carolina, get route, and that's the route. And if you look at the number of stops, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stops, and they're 50 minutes, 75 minutes, 30 minutes. They're they're longer stops, 19 hours and 827 miles. So I did the same for the other models. And this is a mid uh, mid range uh, road trip. This is about 800 miles of road trip. What about if we go to, you know, 1000 plus miles? So I decided to try from Chicago to Orlando in Florida. And we start with the Model X. And we see a ton more stops. And a 27 hour trip in 1200 miles. And I did the same for the other models that I'm comparing. Now, mind you, this is how Tesla computes the, the most optimal route to get to one point to another. And then, so I decided that this was not, uh, this was still a very long road trip, but there are longer road trips. For example, what if I want to go to Los Angeles, California? That's about a 2,000 mile road trip on a Model X. And we get that, we get a ton of stops starting in Peru, Illinois, and that's 46 hours and 2,000 miles. And then we did the same for the other models that I'm comparing. And then I decided to do a road trip that will be very long in the U.S., it's, you know, probably longest road trip you can do, and it actually doesn't start in the U.S., it starts in Canada, to Miami, Florida. And this is quite the long trip. You can see many, many stops. I'm not going to count them right, right now, but 68 hours, 29 uh, minutes, and it's uh, 3,500 3, miles on our uh, Model S 100D. 74 hours. <clears throat> and here's what happens. I took this duration of times, I converted this to decimal for uh, just comparison purposes, and I created a, a table that we're gonna see that looks a little bit like this. Where we have the origin, the destination, the miles, uh, that were um, recommended by the Tesla road trip planner, the model, the EPA miles, approximately EPA miles that uh, the car is rated for, and the time it took for each one of the each one of the comparisons to actually get to the destination. I included the ice here, uh, a, a regular car, and the time. Now, as we can see, pretty much all the time the longer range is going to get there fast, right? And then the eyes has, it's considerably less time to get to the destinations. Now, having it in table form, you can see and pause the video to take a look at it if you want. But I decided that I was also going to do the following. I was going to put it in graph. And in graph, it looks like this. <clears throat> so, we can see that the more miles, the x-axis here has the miles traveled, and then the y-axis is the hours that it takes us to get there. Okay, So we can see, unsurprisingly, that the Tesla Model um, X, 
with 235 miles of range, 237 miles of range, is clearly the slowest to get to the finish, right? And in very long trips, it takes considerably more time than the other Tesla models. <clears throat> Whereas the ICE car takes considerably less time to get to destination. It's a big difference, right? These two are big differences. Now, the mid-range Model 3 or the S75D, <clears throat> of course it takes longer than the, the two cars that are rated about 300 and plus miles, the Model 3 long uh, range and the S100D. But it's not a very, very long time. And you can see that in shorter road trips, in shorter road trips, it's pretty much about the same. It's it's few minutes. I mean, and by few minutes, I mean less than an hour or right about an hour, if at all, difference, right? Up to like 1,000 miles. Now, most road trips that I do and that I know people do are anywhere between, you know, are in this range, like 800 miles or so. Um, and we don't do too many. Another consideration is anything above... 1200 miles on a Tesla is already taking around 24 hours. So this is probably, you're probably going to do this in two days. So again, this difference, right, in time between the X and the other models might not be so important because if you're going to like stop in the middle to sleep and then it's a whole new day, then for a whole new day, perhaps one hour more, one hour less, it's not going to make or break your road trip. So even with the 235 mile range, you can still make the same road trip in about the same time if it's a two day road trip, right? And if it's a one day road trip, a small road trip, you're in about the same ballpark. Now, what is, what's up with the ice? I don't wanna, I want, I'll try to be very objective here. This is ice driving and never stopping. This is Tesla driving and you have to stop. There's no other way to do this. You have to stop at the charging stations. So if you time your stops, you can stop and get coffee or get dinner. And if you have a family, you know you have to stop for about half an hour for meals. And there might be a stop in between. With the ICE, I have not considered that. In the Tesla, the stops are there. You just have to time them right. With the ICE, if you add stops, it's still, you know, a, a much faster way to get there. Okay, if you have half hour stops for... for um, for food and here and there another extra stop you know in the longer road trips this is still gonna be a lot faster to get there okay in the shorter road trips if you have to stop once for food in the Tesla you might stop twice it's not a big difference right so let's look at our table again for example if I go from Chicago to St. Paul right on a mid-range it takes eight hours, okay? On the, on the, on the longest range, uh, Model S, it takes 7.2 hours. That's, that's about seven hours, 15 minutes, seven hours, 13 minutes or so, all right? Now, I, this is a 45 minute difference, more or less, just to approximate. It's a 45 minute difference. That's not too bad, you know? If, if I'm going to go to, uh, from Chicago to Minneapolis, if I'm going to travel 400 miles, I'm going to stay, probably I'm going to stay over for the night. So 40 minutes is not going to make or break my road trip. It's perfectly doable. Now, on the ICE car, it takes me 5.9 hours, so six hours to get there. But I'll probably stop for food 30 minutes and perhaps, you know, another pit stop here and there. It's going to take me about six and a half hours. So again, it will be just an hour difference, right? So the slowest, um, the slowest car here takes 8.3. The fastest, including stops, is like 6.5. So this is probably roughly a two-hour difference, less than two-hour difference. I, it's very manageable. So for these kind of road trips, it doesn't matter which car you get, which range you get. You'll do it in about the same time. If you go, say, to Raleigh, which is an 800-mile road trip, I think the situation is very similar. Although the ICE car, with stops, because you still do this in one day, with the ICE car, the ICE car uh, with stops, you can still make this in 15, 16 hours, right? The long range, you can still make it in 16 hours. With, this, with the shortest range, now you start to get into, into you know, the two-day boundary. This is probably a two-day trip 
where this is a very long one day trip. Now, if you have kids, all of these are two day trips, right? Uh, maybe. If you go now to Orlando or to Los Angeles or you go from Vancouver uh, to Miami, right? Again, even in these long trips, I believe the electric cars are more or less similar. For a 24 hour, for a 22 hour trip, you're gonna have to sleep somewhere, right? And you're gonna have to split it in two. So whether it's 11, 11 hours each day or 13 hours each day is not a big difference, right? So again, I don't care, I don't think that the range matters all that much when you're doing these kind of trips in an electric car. Of course, the ice car is, at this point, the ice car is the way to go if, if you're going there for speed. Now, in the very long road trip, there might be a difference between electric cars, right? So uh, 68, 69 hours, that is, you know, between 86 and, and 68, that's almost 20, that's almost a day that you gain a day on the, on the quicker, on the longer range models almost over the shortest range model. You gain almost a day, right? And with the mid-range, you gain some, you might gain a day, Again, you might not, depends on how you're driving, but on the Model X 75D, you do gain a day. So if you're planning to cross the United States in a Model X uh, 75D, and you're going there for speed, then you know that it's gonna take you know, an extra day compared to other uh, models. But again, if you're crossing the United States, you probably have a lot of time, and that extra day is not gonna change. It's not gonna make or break your road trip. So. I would be interested in knowing what do you guys think about um, about these performances and whether range really makes a difference for your lifestyle in a way that it's that that will definitely justify a longer range versus shorter range. Let me know in the comments. I hope you like this video. Bye.